Trivia Schmodown. What a team match we have. We have known quantities joining new teams in their new factions. It is the new era. I am Mark Baby Carrots Ellis, and I am thrilled to be joined by the one, the only, the legend herself, <laughs> Miss Emma Fife, is here in studio. Thank you so much, Mark. And also for, you know, lauding me to the status that, that I think I'm truly deserving of here at the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Hey, look, <laughs> anyone who loans me their Harry Potter Gryffindor <laughs> robe is worthy of mythical status. And that is certainly one Emma Fife. Now, Emma, I know you've been keeping an eye on things going on in the league, and we had this new era. We had the nuke, and now we have a draft, and teams get blown up, but we have all these players that are looking for a new home, a safe haven. Some team today is going to find out that they are 1-0, and and they're off and running, and they're doing it for their factions. That is absolutely true, Mark. And what we're dealing with today are players who we've seen compete in the Schmodown before. There's no brand new faces here at the desk. But you look at somebody like a, a Jim Veveda, who mm -hmm. is one half of the Wicked, who are represented by Roxy Stryer and the Rockstars. Yeah. He's someone who has attracted a lot of attention in the Schmodown as someone who could potentially be a new singles champion because his basis of movie knowledge is so broad and he's so good at recalling it. Where Jim has suffered in the past is in knowing the game it's of the actually showdown. the game yes. play. it's a strategy but then you pair him up with somebody like jared haven who is not much to look at but he's a really <laughs> big sports fan really and big sports fan. he knows his inner geekdom so if he's coming from the world of inner geekdom and jim vavita can marry if they can get that together then i think that they're going to be a force to be reckoned with but on the other side of the ledger you kind of have a similar situation it's absolutely true because obviously we have liz shannon miller as one half of rogue two who are part of the swag squad as represented by winston marshall <laughs> The thing about Liz is she was a huge up-and-comer last year in the Schmodown. As it stands already in this season, she's more or less ranked as a strong contender in singles yet again. But now we're seeing her paired in teams with Adam Plavik, somebody who we tend to think of as an inner geekdom competitor, but who, if you look at Adam's past record, he actually definitely has a pretty deep sort of more broad movie knowledge. And you know as well as anybody because you're the manager of the Shire Wolves, mm. so when you pair two people together, it really is about the team chemistry as much as it is the individual knowledge, right? Absolutely, and I think we're looking at a couple of teams here where, where once again, you each team has one player who we know as being pretty strong in the Inner Geekdom League and one player who's pretty strong elsewhere. I would argue that everyone playing here, if this was like an Inner Geekdoms team match, I have no doubt that this would be a knockdown drag out fight. And I think that is going to be the case today. But again, remains to be seen. Now let's talk a little bit about where things are as far as the factions right. go. Uh, Swag Squad, they're they're definitely keeping their heads above water. Roxy Stryer kind of needs this win for the Rock Stars. I think it'd be big for her, and she really wants to prove herself. She was so close to Manager of the Year last year. She thought she deserved it. It didn't go her way. And this year, she's really, you see the fire in there. And then Winston, I like the, the, the way that he manages his team. Every manager has their own sort of tactics, and, and Winston seems to be cool, collected, but when he needs to put the pressure on his own players, he's able to do it in a way that's Lombardi-like, that challenges the player and they rise to the occasion. Yeah, I think that we have two really strong managers paired up in this match and a couple of teams that I don't know. I think we, we might see some, some new star players when it comes to the team leagues here in the movie trip. Did I just compare Winston Marshall to Vince Lombardi? <laughs> it's been a long day, folks. We're going to go to the pregame interviews with a couple of inner geeks and some movie trivia dorks. Here it is. The rookie sensation, Liz Shannon Miller, Lightning Liz. She beat Demi in her first match. She is also on a roll. And then you have Paul Oyama. So one of them is going to take a huge step forward. The other one is going to get that first loss. Donnie Darko. And the winner I guess I should have brought three of my best friends to help me out. That would have been fun. Hopefully they're better company. Yeah, I mean, coming into this, uh, this is my first time on a team, which is really exciting. It's I've never done that before. You've theoretically done this a bit. I have. I've done teams a few times, but it's been a few years since I've actually been on a team. Who knows the ish? All right, Liz knows the ish. I've seen a match. She she be kicking some. 
No, I can't cuss because of the babies. We are the wicked because we're all Boston representatives, and honestly, we're a wicked good time. That's what we are. We're a wicked good time. This is about to be a team that you don't want to mess with. Jim Vavita, come all over to the rock stars, baby. That's Whoa. a very interesting pick. We have not seen Jim Vavita in quite Happy some Happy to time. have you. I think that you were the steal of the draft and teamed you with Jared, who is an expert on this game. He's a super fan of it as well, and he's done some pretty gangster things in the Schmodown. I think it's the first time in the history of my life anybody has referred to me as gangster, and I like it. We're playing, what, Jim and Jared? Uh, I don't really know Jim. I just know that he was, what, on Team IGN, and he gave Roca, of all people, biopics. Do you know that Roca was alive when those biopics actually happened? Like, Roca is in every single one of those things in real life, so that was dumb. Way to scratch at the scab, buddy. Jeez, I thought that had healed over. Guess what? I just need you to answer the questions, and I'll do the rest of it. And I'll, I'll help you there. You're not going to make another biopics mistake again. I don't want anybody mentioning that one more time because you don't deserve that. You're let better. Me, let me say this. If we spin biopics, we're choosing it, and, and you're going to right or wrong, baby. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. And I'm not going to do anything because I'm not that good in biopics. But he is, and that's all that matters. We're taking it back. The Wicked, more specifically Jim, will be taken back. Biopics. And Roxy, you know I love you, Roxy. And in the spirit of Jerry, since I know we're playing him, Roxy, I'm hoping that when this is all said and done, you will accept my invitation. You know what I'm talking about soon enough. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> drip, drip, baby. Rope two in the house. We have spoken. I mean, look, that, that what I see in that pregame interview from both teams is confidence. And yeah. I think that that happens when you've had some success either with a team in the past or individually in an inner geekdom setting. You have a new person, you're excited to compete with them. These two teams both think they're going to win. Yeah, there's a lot of enthusiasm coming from both sides. And can I just say, everyone involved in this match is really nice. They're really it's nice. Just a lot of really nice people. Yeah. Uh, I want good things for everybody involved here today. So. Shall we move on to talking some strengths and weaknesses here, Mark? So strengths and weaknesses, what do you got for, let's start with Rogue 2. All right, so got? for Rogue 2, we have got comic book movies, international releases, oh. and having easy to pronounce last names. Lavic, I got it. <laughs> and then moving on to uh, The Wicked, we have got Star Wars, new releases, and worshiping Tom Brady. Well, <laughs> no, that's uh, so a please. <laughs> All right, all right, everybody relax. <laughs> it's the, mixed, the wicked. mixed feelings on Tom Brady That's right, here the, the wicked audience. is what the rest of the AFC East calls the New England Patriots. Uh, without further ado, I think it's time to get this match underway. Emma, you ready? I'm ready, let's do this. Then it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. <laughs> Introducing first. Representing the faction, the Rockstars, led to the ring by their manager, Roxy Stryer. Please welcome Jim Baveda, Jared Haven, the Wicked! Oh, we got Roxy, we got a look at the stars, Dixie Howard, Mark and Rico. There's Baveda, there's Haven. Mark Andrinko and Stacy came out, and Roxy, all wearing sunglasses. The actual competitors aren't wearing sunglasses. I, and I like So at least we're making some headway with the, the banning sunglasses. The sunglasses role. have gone from the competitors to the managers, <laughs> and that's the way it should stay. We need stay. to see clearly. <laughs> and their opponent, representing Swag Squad, led to the ring by their manager, Winston Marshall. It is Lee Shannon Miller. And Adam Lavik, Rogue Two! There's Winston, so he's loose right now. Yep. But he, he knows when to go. Oh, here comes Shannon Arby. Oh. Wow, what an intro. other faction mates and the managers are doing a bit that the, yeah. the players are not part of. No, it's all good. It's all good. Before we start, oh. though, Roxy, where are you, girl? Come here. Come here. Come here, please. Please come here. Please. Uh, I don't know what camera got it. This is... 
Oh, it's a big deal for me. Okay, um, we've been good friends for a long time, and uh, you know, it's been amazing co-hosting with you on SCN Live, and, and you had me on Live at the Roxy, and we've become really good friends, and uh, so before we start this match, I just wanted to ask you a question. Oh, Roxy? Wow. What is oh, boy. here? Will you accept this L? Pressure's on, Jim. Yeah. That's, that's one word that starts with L, Mark. <laughs> was that the word that you think went No, I don't think it to? was, but you know. Oh, boy. Well, no proposals here today. Everybody's marital <laughs> status remains the same. And now I will read the team's the rules for round number one. It's a three-round match. It is the team format. However, round number one is an individual exercise of movie trivia know-how. Eight questions are asked to the field. These questions come from eight different corners of movie trivia schmodown goodness. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. You have about 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard in front of you. Once we ask you by name to reveal your answer, please show what you wrote on the whiteboard to your camera. At the same time, you verbalize your answer into the microphone. Again, team format, but you cannot rely on your teammates' knowledge in round number one. Each team has three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds to get that answer from the back of your head to the front of your head, use the JTE rule. You also each, as a team, have one challenge to be issued through your manager throughout the three-round match. Adam Lavin, how you feeling? I feel great. How are you? You look good. I miss you. Thanks. I miss you too, Jim buddy. Jim <laughs> quick like a cat, good reflexes. How you feeling? Feeling good, feeling good. It's good to be back on the Schmodown. Good to have you back, sir. Liz Shannon Miller, I always appreciate your Star Wars love and your hats. How you feeling? Great, looking forward to this. All right, and last but not least, Jared Haven, where is Tom Brady going next year? <laughs> Let's just play the game, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get ready to Woo! Schmodown! <laughs> I think he's coming back, I don't know. We'll see. Should he know? We'll see. Pray. Your first right. question is in the world of action adventure movies. And the query is for a point. What action film stars Charlize Theron, Sophia Boutella, and James McAvoy? And we're off and running. We are. Off and running. Off to the I was races. gonna blow my, my lungs out with that intro. I, I really hit that rogue too. I don't know how Ken and Christian do it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, starting with you, Mr. Lobbock. Atomic Blonde. He got it. Does Jim have it? Atomic Blonde. Yes, he does. Excellent. Over to Liz Shannon Miller. I did not have it. Does oh. not. Does Jared. Thank God for Jim. <laughs> hey, so with that being said, uh, we're tied up. Right. <laughs> one, one side of the table That's seems right. to be uh, functioning. We'll, we'll see if uh, the other side of the table manages to wake up uh, with the following question. Question number two in the category of directors. Who directed the films The Lost Boys, Phone Booth, and the Phantom of the Opera. Do you know that there's a they sequel a, they to made a movie Phantom out of, of the Opera? Oh, yeah, and there's a sequel to Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Phantom of the Opera 2? <laughs> Love really? Never Dies. Wow. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, basically Five, four, fan fiction three, set to music. Two, one. Pens down. Uh, going to you first, Mr. Vavita. What do you got? Joel Schumacher. It that is, is correct. The director of <laughs> Batman Forever. Liz? Uh, Joel Schumacher. I'm she got also it. correct. Joel Schumacher. Schumacher. All right. Yes, he does. Adam. Joel Schumacher. All right. Yeah. Clean sweep. Everybody's on the board. Jim and Adam remain perfect through two questions. Uh, next question in the world of dramas. Who played psychologist Sean McGuire in the film Good Will Hunting? How do you like that, man? <laughs> <laughs> that uh, took place in uh, Boston. It, I don't know that that's a Boston accent. That's it. This is how uh, Bostonians uh, talk. Five. It's like I'm back in New England. Three, <laughs> two, one. Pens down, going you first, Liz Shannon Miller. Uh, Robin Williams. She got Correct. it, Jared. Yes. Adam. Robin Williams. And Jim. Robin Williams. Late All great right. Robin Williams. All right. Question number four, category of fantasy sci-fi. In what 1980s fantasy adventure will you find Arnold Schwarzenegger strapped to something called the Wheel of Pain? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this also takes place in Boston. 
I think I think you're right. Yeah, I think it does. Yeah. yeah. Outside of uh, Saugus. Saugus. Yep. <laughs> My family's from Watertown. I can. I can. Watertown. We're from Watertown. Massachusetts. Watertown, Mass. Five, My family's from Watertown, four, Connecticut. Three, two. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, not happy with me. One. <laughs> Pens down, Jared. Total Recall. Is uh, not, not Total, total Recall. recall. Oh. Adam Havitt. The Running Man. Not the Running Swing Man. Swing and a miss. How about Jim? I also screwed up. Running uh, Man. Uh, Endless uh, Shannon uh, Miller. Uh, I'm, this is a 50-50 shot. Conan the Barbarian? That is she correct! Oh, oh, yeah. There it is. Liz Shannon Miller. <laughs> and with that, Coming through. Rogue 2 uh, takes a one-point lead <laughs> over the Wicked. Both fire. teams settling in here. Your next category is the world of comedies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. At least you're not doing it Thank anymore. <laughs> it's, it's now just the audience. I'm not doing comedy anymore? <laughs> No. Get tickets at markellislive.net. <laughs> um, your question in the world of comedies, what 1990s comedy has the line, that rug really tied the room together? <laughs> Bit of an inside joke for our studio audience. Man, it sure is. Yeah. But truly, a rug can Five, tie a whole room together. Four, it's feeling empty. Three. I'm getting a new rug. Mm. I'll let you know how it goes. Thank One. you. Uh, pens down, going to Adam. Big Lebowski? It is Correct. the Big Lebowski. <laughs> Does Jim have it? No. Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber. Uh, Good guess. Liz Shannon Miller. The Big Lebowski. Oh, right. Jared, I, put, I put, tried to put me in pants. I, well, Did not I have the Big Lebowski. I can't actually read what Jared wrote. <laughs> all right, so all of a sudden, Rogue 2 starting to inch ahead of the wicket yes, a little bit. Eight it's all right, five. Jim. We got this. All right. <laughs> Let's see uh, if they can get back in the game with this next question. Question number six, category of horror slash thriller. <laughs> What horror franchise is known for the line, do you want to play a game? I, you, you made that a little menacing at the end. Well, it is that a little menacing. That was really well done. Yeah. You started out nice and sweet, and then at the end when you hit game, you're like, You game. know, when you're, when you're quoting a film, exactly. it's hard for me to not do did. the voice. I would actually love to Three. Do I'm scared, too. One. Pens down. Uh, we are going to you, Mr. Vavita. What do you got? Uh, now I'm doubting it. Saw? Yes, that's okay. correct. Uh, <laughs> well, I didn't doubt it. Not Hellraiser, Saw. 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 Yes. Jared has also it. Also correct. Saw. Adam's got it too. All right. Yeah. Oh, holy shit. I mean, All right. So yeah. it remains a three-point game in the favor of Rogue Two. Uh, we move on to your penultimate question, round number one. That is from the world of crime movies. And your question: Who plays a convict who is the brother of boxer Casey Affleck in the crime drama Out of the Furnace? Did I just say boxer Casey Affleck? <laughs> did you say? Yeah, is you he, did. Is he a brawler? It's brother of boxer Casey. Well, I think in the Probably in the film wave. he's a he's a boxer. He'd be a flyweight. <laughs> Five. Yeah. Four. Three. Two. One. Uh, pens down. Liz Shannon Miller going to you first. Don't think I have it. Christian Bale. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah, <laughs> Christian Bale. Jared's yes. got Christian Bale. Does Adam? Christian Bale. Yes, he right. does. Christian Bale. And Jim Christian Bale's Bale got it too. Across the board. <laughs> All right, your final question in round number one in the category of animated. Uh oh. What is the name of the teenager who takes on the mantle of Spider-Man, voiced by Shameik Moore in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? Oh, yeah, I'll say this. I like all four competitors oh. as human beings. Mm -hmm. Adam Lavick, by far the best penmanship on that table. It's true. It's I, like block letters. Yeah. It's yeah, unreal. if I if I needed somebody Five, to write something that needed to be understood, four, Adam Lavick's three, your guy. Two. I'll do the JT rule. Uh, JT rule for Jared Haven. All right. What is the name of the teenager who takes on the mantle of Spider-Man, voiced by Shameik Moore in Spider-Man: Into the Spider-Verse? And that's a JT rule for Wicked. Yes. Yeah, Adam Lavick should like have his own font. Oh, well, Lavick the font. Yeah, it should replace Winged. I would definitely. I would definitely download that font. Five, Use it on my thumbnails. Four, three. He's blushing. Look at him. Two. <laughs> one. Uh, pens down. Uh, Jared Haven, could you conjure it? I couldn't get Miles Teller out of my head. I got Miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not Miles Teller. That's the first Teller. name. Does Adam have both names? <laughs> Miles Morales. Look at that. Hey, right. <laughs> um, Jim Baby, did you have it? Miles Morales. Uh, yeah. And Liz Shannon Miller. Miles Morales. She's oh, got it, too. All right. All right, we got it. We, got, right. we got Ron, too. So we're looking at a 14 to 10. <laughs> Lead for Rogue Two. I mean, it still really could be anybody's game because, you know, going into the wheel round, you up the luck factor. In, in, in round one, yes, there is certainly a, a certain level of luck in terms of getting questions that you know the answer to. Sure. 
But, you know, the wheel, this this is really where things can turn around. So at this point, it's still really anyone's game. And that's game. the thing about the wheel round is that working on that wheel, especially for somebody trying to make the transition from inner geekdom to a more broad field of knowledge is what slices do you like, what slices do you fear, opponents and spinner's choice are lurking on that there wheel, as well as 10 different movie trivia categories. Uh, this is a team format, and so each team gets a spin of the wheel. Once they settle on a category, they're going to hear six questions from that world. Each question's worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. Uh, Rogue two. Before you spin the wheel, I'm going to remind everybody that the actual wheel, the entire wheel, is sponsored by Jake Burnham, a great Schmodown patron. Thank you, Jake, for all that you do. If you guys want to hear your name mentioned on an upcoming match, check out the movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon today. So Jake Burnham wanted his uh, sponsored slices, comedies, and Matt and Ben, which I assume is Matt, Damon, and Ben. Woo! Those are the sponsored slices. So, Rogue Two, <laughs> had a little bit of time to think about it. You all want to spin the wheel first or defer to the wicket? We will defer to our opponent. All right. All right. Uh, gentlemen, give it a very gentle spin. That thing is, uh, well, it's a pretty sensitive wheel, folks. Would you like to spin or you want me to spin? Uh, you spin. All right. <laughs> Roxy cheering her troops on. We talked about it before. Round and round <laughs> it goes. Yeah, this, uh, th this wheel. I have no idea if I'm it's a, it's my a water a um, What? If one of the pegs, if one did a peg fall off? Oh, I see. Yeah, where the uh, it, yeah. it's where the um, things must be. Yeah, as long as it's not affecting the spin, I think it, we're okay. I, think it, I don't know. Would you like it? I'll. I'll no, I, it's, it looks like I think it's fine, but it's up to you. Guys. Slow down. You know, since they put my ugly mug on comedies, oh, nobody ever spins. Biopics. <laughs> We're taking it! They're taking it! Okay. They're taking it! Yes. Yes. Suck it, Faulty wheel be damned. Roxy's yeah, exclamation of suck it, John Roca, of course, <laughs> uh, <laughs> being a reference to the time that uh, Jim gave John Roca biopics that is <laughs> as an opponent's yeah, choice. Yeah, Clearly, I'm not having studied the career of John Roca. <laughs> There's a documentary that Eric Rodriguez did. Shout out to Nerd Chronic. All right, gentlemen. Um, you spun. Biopics, you decided to keep it. The movie's about real people. And you're going to hear six questions. You may confer with each other for each and every question. Reminder that you can check the multiple choice if you're not sure of the answer. Emma's going to be asking you the questions. Emma, at your ready. All right. Question number one in the category of biopics Who played Joan Jett in the 2010 biographical drama The Runaways? Kristen Stewart. That is correct for two points. All right. Jim nodding emphatically as soon as he heard the question. And question they cut the lead in half. <laughs> number two. Who played Abraham Lincoln's son, Robert Todd Lincoln, in 2012's Lincoln? How many more times can I say Lincoln in that of, sentence? A lot of pennies. <laughs> Joseph Gordon-Levitt. That is correct for two points. All right, we're tied. And the Wicked still has four questions remaining in the world of biopics. Question. I, mean, I, I gave him the nod on that one. <laughs> Number three. Sorry. <laughs> Jared. He just feels he needs to participate in, yeah. in the in this round in some by some stretch of the imagination. I'm not in my head. All right. Question number three. <laughs> Kevin Klein portrayed what classic film star in the 2013 film The Last of Robin Hood? Errol Flynn. That is correct for two All points. Right. Wow. And the wicked has taken the lead over Rogue Two. Jim Vevita, listen, ve listening very carefully for context clues on that one. Uh, question number four: In Hidden Figures, which famous astronaut do the three main heroines help launch into space? You didn't need to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> King, uh, five. Yeah, multiple choice. Four. All right. Is it A, Buzz Aldrin, B, John Glenn, C, Alan Shepard, or D, Neil Armstrong? Those are all famous astronauts, so. I'm going to say John Glenn. That is correct for yeah. one point. All right. 
Two right. questions <laughs> remain, and uh, they are really taking advantage they... of this biopics. Listen, yeah. Jim wanted to keep biopics. I think he yeah. made a good decision. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Your penultimate question. <clears throat> Who played Jane Hawking, wife to Stephen Hawking, in the 2014 film The Theory of Everything? to five. Can yeah, we do multiple, do multiple choice? choice? Okay. Is it A, Alicia Vikander, B, Felicity Jones, C, Emily Blunt, or D, Sienna Miller? It's Felicity Jones. That is correct for one point. All right, so we got multiple choice a couple times, yep. but uh, no opportunities for a steal from Rogue Two just yet. One yeah. question remains. All right, final question. Infamous was the Truman Capote biopic that co-starred Sandra Bullock. Who played Capote? Toby Jones. That is correct for two points. Wow. What a solid round two. A really, two. really well played round and some good strategizing going on there because in round two, yeah. if you're not absolutely certain of the answer, there's truly no shame in going multiple choice, especially because your opponents yeah. can steal. Right. I mean, you have you have two very good movie trivia players on the other side, so if you leverage a guess, it's smart to at least reduce the point value so that they only can steal a point, but never was the case with the Wicked, who now have a six-point lead. Uh, and now it's Rogue Two's turn to spin. And here comes Liz Shannon Miller to do the honors. We'll see how opponent's choice is feeling. <laughs> All right, looking good. Crisp wheel spin so far. Yeah, and and also everybody being respectful of how sensitive the wheel is. The wheel's been yeah. through a lot in its young life. <laughs> You've been like 10 matches? It's been, it's been a good 20 matches 20. for that wheel, yeah. All right. Round and round it goes, but opponent's choice is kind of creeping up there. Oh, please, come on, Lord. Yes. Stop, Jesus. <laughs> DC, DC Films. Film. I have so a feeling they're going to keep it. You would think they would want to keep it, but they're going to console you. You only have about 15 seconds to make your determination. I got a dog to Again, feed. Uh, yeah, we're going to keep it. They're going to keep right. DC <laughs> movies. All right. And here we go. In the world of DC films, you're going to have six questions, each one worth two points. Again, you're not sure the answer, check the multiple choice. The question goes down to one. First of six, what kind of vehicle did the Joker escape in after his bank heist at the beginning of The Dark Knight? School bus. It was a school was. bus. <laughs> two points. All right, your next question. Green Lan a Green Lantern's ring and power batteries are fueled by what? Willpower. <laughs> is that real? Wow. <laughs> that <Okay>. is real. <laughs> All right. Uh, you just got to want it, Emma. Just, you just got to want just, it. If you want it enough, you, you, will, you too, your ring will become magical, <laughs> and you can do incredible things. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> they're trying to do an incredible thing, which is come back on the Wicked, who had a six-point lead at the beginning of the spin for Rogue Two, and they sense have answered two questions correctly. Four remain. Your next question for two more points. Who portrays the character of John Constantine in 2005's Constantine? Keanu Reeves. That is correct. <laughs> I, th I think we should start a new uh, rule in the showdown that there has to be at least one Keanu question <laughs> per match. I co-sign that. Truly, that would bring a lot of joy to me I would to, say to there has personally. to be one Bill and Ted's bogus journey question for each one. Absolutely. I support this. Thank you. One guy we'll, in the crowd. We'll, we'll rewrite the rules. <laughs> um, bring it right. to the committee. Your next question. What is the Penguin's real name in Batman Returns? Oswald Cobblepot. I just want to meet my parents. <laughs> <laughs> two more points, and Rogue Two is taking a two-point lead on the Wicked, who neither team giving up any chance to steal as of yet. Your penultimate question in the world of DC movies, Adam and Liz Shannon Miller, who directed 1982's Swamp Thing? First question to give them pause, it looks yeah, like. Give the crowd pause, too. Can we get multiple choice, please? I certainly can provide that. Is it A, George A. Romero, B, Wes Craven, C, John Carpenter, or D, Jim Wynorski? We're going to swing for Romero. Uh, that is 
A strike. Ah. I can give you the uh, the options again, gentlemen, before you wager a guess. Is it A, George A. Romero, B, Wes Craven, C, John Carpenter, or D, Jim Wynorski? Wes Craven. Correct for one point. That's a point. And I just, did I curse it? Was that the announcer's curse? I said no steal has happened. Uh, there question? it is. There it is. My bad. All right, so it is currently a one-point lead for Rogue Two. However, one question remains in round number two. It's worth two points. This could go either way. You ask question in the world of DC movies, what comedian co-starred alongside Christopher Reeves in Superman 3? Richard Pryor. The great Richard Pryor it was. And Rogue Two now goes into round number three with a three-point lead. Emma Fife, we've seen two rounds, both teams throwing haymakers. What's going to happen next? You know, again, obviously, Rogue Two finds themselves in a very nice position with a three-point lead nice. because the Wicked can't come back simply by answering their two-point question. Yeah. However, they can tie it up with their three-pointer and take the lead easily with their five-pointer. So they're not in a terrible position going into this round. You're forcing the Wicked to burn two questions before you even yeah. have to take one. So not in TKO range necessarily, Certainly but not. it's a nice cushion to have. It definitely is. Yeah, I mean, the, the Rogue Two's got to be feeling pretty good, but I don't think that the Wicked should be despairing all that much because, as I say, they have the opportunity mm -hmm. to take this back, and they don't have to answer all three of their questions in order to do so. That's right. And the team that at least the manager and Jared cheer for, uh, the Patriots, they know a little something about a few big-time comebacks. <laughs> so 24 to 21 is the score. Oh, just Jim, too? Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Well, we're on a Boston T-shirt, for God's sake. <laughs> Congratulations yeah. on all your championships. <laughs> <laughs> Row two, you find yourself in a three-point lead. Um, both teams are going to give us a series of numbers. We need three numbers from each team. These numbers can range from one to 20. Each number corresponds to a different corner of movie trivia, showdown, at know-how. And as a friendly reminder, since it's the team format, once I give you the category for your two-point question, the team has to decide which member is going to answer that question solo. You may not rely on the strength of your teammate for the two-point question. The opposite teammate will have to answer the three-point question solo. You may only confer with your teammate for the five-point question. Okay, Rogue Two, what three numbers do you like? Let's do yours. Uh, two, seven, and fifteen. Okay. All right, put you on the spot there. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Uh, the wicked. <laughs> Your three numbers. Oh, uh, we saying our numbers? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And, uh, Say whatever you want. Five, fourteen, and twelve. Five, 14, <laughs> and 12. Jared so. was very confident about uh, the number 12. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, the Wicked have selected their numbers, obviously the number 12 and owed to Buffalo Bills quarterback Jim Kelly. And with the Wicked, uh, your first question is going to be for two points. Now, you selected um, number five, and that corresponds to the world of romantic comedies. So, who feels like fielding that one for two points? I'll do it. I'll take it. All right. Jared's going to take it. Jared. All right, Jared. Jared, your two-point question in the realm of romantic comedies. Uh-huh. Who plays Tiffany Maxwell in Silver Linings Playbook? Jennifer Lawrence. That is correct okay. for two points. <laughs> All right. He got that one. It almost up, seemed too like easy. As you mentioned before, the Wicked going to have to answer another question here. So their uh, second number was seven, the number of Joe Theismann. And that corresponds to the category of musicals. Musicals. Which is going to be asked to Jim Veveda. And Jim Veveda alone, his right. musical knowledge, is about to be on display. Jim, in the category of musicals, for three points, in Mamma Mia, here we go again. What MCU actor plays Sophie's husband, Sky? Stellan Skarsgård? That is incorrect. We're looking for Dominic Cooper. Uh, that was the, the younger generation in Mamma Mia. Dominic. He's in it. He's in it, baby. He's, in it. And he's, in the he's MCU. definitely in it. He plays the character of Sky. It. Arguably more in the MCU than Dominic Cooper. I have no idea. 12 was the 12. last one. 12. 12. They were very emphatic 12. 5, 14, 12. 5, 14, 12. All right. All right, so now we arrive at that moment. The five-point question. 
is going to be asked to the wicked. If they get it right, they're going to force the hand of Rogue 2 to answer multiple questions. You got it. However, if the wicked miss this, then Rogue 2 will win by technical knockout. So you selected number 12. And that corresponds, Emma, to the category of... Dramas. <laughs> All right. I mean, sure. <laughs> For five points. In the category of dramas, and you can confer on this, what was the name given to the man that held Joy and Jack captive in room? And the crowd has strong feelings on that one. <laughs> A lot of hushed exclamations. Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Two. Uh, what was the name given to the man that held Joy and Jack captive in room? All right, they have one JTE rule remaining. Remember they burned one in round one. Yes. And now they just used one, so I'm going to go to five, four, yeah. three, two. Repeat the question. Last All right, one. final one. What was the name given to the man that held Joy and Jack captive in room? Five, four, three, two. We're going to go with the bad one. man. <laughs> and <laughs> your winner! <laughs> two! Yes. Old Nick. What was the answer? Old Nick. Old Nick. Old Nick. Old Nick. Yeah. Nick? I was Nick. closer with Steve. Old Nick. Old Nick. Old Nick. Old Nick. Yeah. 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 Old man. Not to be confused with Old Saint Nick. Yeah. 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 Very Tough. different. Uh, question, but a technical yeah. knockout has been scored by Rogue 2, and I don't even think uh, the Wicked played, but I think they played well as a matter I, of fact. I think they played incredibly got well. got a rough series of questions. Yeah, there. absolutely. I mean, that, that's the thing is that is luck is part of the game, and sometimes categories that you're not necessarily as confident in come up. And look, drama is a broad category. Yes, it is. So, you know, the, we could have just as easily asked them a drama question that they knew the answer to, but that's just the way the chips fell today. And they fell in favor of Rogue 2, who, like we said at the top of the show, now that team is so much confidence and a nice win for the Swag Squad. Absolutely. And I mean, again, Winston's somebody that's sitting in a pretty nice position as far as the faction rankings go. I think that this is this is really going to continue to boost him up here, especially yeah. when you do have players on your team as strong as Liz Shannon Miller, who proved today that she's just as good in teams as she is in singles. And I really think that uh, that she and Adam are, are going to go far. We look at that league. compliment of knowledge because yeah. Liz doing very well in round one, and then Adam coming to play with his fun DC, and he knows that world very well. So nice complimentary pieces for Rogue Two. To, uh, Jen, you're with Adam, and you're with Liz Shannon, and you're with Winston Marshall. Who feels like talking first? How did you guess, Mark? Oh my <laughs> God. You have to be feeling pretty great about this. You, so the fact that you were able to put these two together and just see the potential there, you have to feel pretty good about it. I mean, that's the funny thing. I heard Roxy was talking mad trash in the promo. I didn't see it beforehand. I just heard she said I was inexperienced. I didn't know what I was doing. Here's the thing. I watched the smoke down, all right? I knew who I was drafting, all right? Okay? A brother does his research, all right? So I knew if I put these two together, it'd be colossal to see the two of them come in here and wreck shop. And that's what happened. Amen. I feel like I just went to church. <laughs> Liz, you guys looked like you had, were having such a good time. Like you looked calm and collected out there. It felt like a new Liz Shannon Miller. I may be wrong. I mean, I, I felt like it was really great having a teammate. Like I didn't know what kind of difference that would make, but it was, it was just comforting to know I'd have, at the very least, someone in my corner also being part of a faction this time made a difference. And in general, just knowing the game better and you know having fun playing it. It's kind of like an emotional support dog that's really good at inner geekdom categories, right? <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take yeah. it. Sure. I want to be clear. Uh, our guests on Romero for that's that was on me. Like I don't oh, want man. I don't want I don't want you to take that tarnish to your DC reputation. No, that was a super hard question. Who the hell? I don't know how many people in this room actually knew the answer. There were probably a few, but. I've never even seen the movie. There's one person raising his hand, and he can go just stand in the corner. <laughs> you can just go stand in the corner. Hold on, there were two. One of them was our faction mate. He knew it. It's fine. No, no, Don't worry I'm about so, it. But, 
But I will say this, honest to God, uh, I, I, I appreciate seeing the two of y'all together because you did bring a calming presence to each other. And I think that that's what is going to carry this faction far is the fact that we really, we're not a bunch of show like the Finstock Exchange and stuff whoa, like that. Whoa, 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 you're yeah. not a bunch of show. There was a- no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not gonna say that they're not talented. They have all the belts right now, save one. So of course, I'm talking about how Bobby brings all 25,000 members of the Finstock Exchange every time they come out. That's all I'm saying. We're, we're, we're here supporting each other. We're not arguing over communication. We're right here together and we're, we're riding this out. Oh, I was just gonna say, but what about the proposal if you're not all show? <laughs> oh, oh, that was just out of pure love. That's what that was. It seemed appropriate. I, we, we had a love superstar in the house, so I just had to confess my love to Roxy. And I love that she eventually accepted that out. Most true. Oh! 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 Damn, damn. Uh, Adam, it was really good mm -hmm. seeing you compete as, not only in, in teams, but in like something other than inner geekdom. Yeah. Did you feel like you were pretty comfortable out there? I did, yeah. I mean, I've been so used to inner geekdom, it was nice to break out of that and do something different. And I was a little nervous about going into categories that I maybe didn't feel as confident in. But for whatever reason, you know, I just, the questions, I was lucky enough to get questions that I just knew the majority of the answers really quickly off the top of my head, so. And I will say, when you spun DC, uh, someone on the other side of the table was not happy about it. So, uh, I'll talk to him in a few minutes, but congratulations, Thank guys. You. Uh, I'm excited to see what you two are gonna do this season. And congratulations, Winston. I feel like this is working out very well for Swag. You know, it's early in the season, so I'm not gonna act like the Cowboys and think we're great and then pull a hamstring. We're gonna, <laughs> we're going to study, we're going to keep in contact with each other, and we're gonna keep riding high until we take the top, we take the, the ring, we take the belt, let's go. All right, back to you guys. And, and that's the Cowboys fan saying that. Um, <laughs> you, you see a real happy team right there. I mean, yeah. they're just reveling in the fact that they maybe found something new and something pretty special. I, I totally agree, and it really was, as Jen pointed out, nice to see Liz Shannon Miller up there so relaxed and feeling so supported, which isn't to say that she hasn't had an impressive performance in the Schmodown, she has, but where competitors really begin to thrive, even outside of the team's league, I think is once they get matched up with that perfect teammate. We've seen it happen time and time again here in the Schmodown. You look at the likes of the partnership between a Sam Levine and a Drew McWeeny, or dare I say, a Rachel Cushing and a Clark Wolf. <laughs> that's, that's, Shout that's, out to myself. You're talking about lightning in a bottle <laughs> yeah, right exactly. there. But you're right, the, the, the pairing of teammates back and forth. But I'll also say this for the Wicked. I think that, that Jared and Jim make for a nice pair. Maybe they, they didn't have the luck with the wheel or some of the questions that Rogue Two got. But I think the Wicked, certainly a force to be reckoned with going forward, we think right now, Jen, how are they feeling about it? I think they're feeling pretty optimistic. I mean, Roxy, uh, you have to feel pretty good about the performance that these two put together because this is their first time playing together as a team. And it's honestly, Jared, I think it's your first time in something other than inner geekdom, am I wrong? That it is, and I was hoping for DC, but Adam spun it, that jerk. <laughs> oh, I right. saw you just absolutely oh. seething. I was like, look how strong his jawline's getting. Oswald Cobblepot. <laughs> Gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I am, I'm really impressed by you guys, and it was their first time playing together. It won't be their last time playing together because I think this is a great team. And, you know, that five-point question, fair as, as ever, but really hard. I yeah. can't blame you guys for not knowing that. That's a really hard question. And I think you guys did everything you could. You communicated. There was never a time in which one of you guys shouted something out, and I, I'm, I'm really impressed by you guys. So uh, for a first match, pretty good. For a first match and then sticking with biopics. I mean, <laughs> that takes some stones. Yes, yes it does. <laughs> this this guy's like, got stones, I'll tell you that much. Boston stones right here. No, um, I just want to say uh, I'm more pissed at myself for missing the Arnold Schwarzenegger question. Because the minute I put my marker down, he was saying markers down, I knew I'd written down the wrong thing. Oh. Uh, the the room question, no, nah, I mean, I, I honest to God didn't know that, I, but yeah. I haven't even seen the room, and I sure as hell haven't seen Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again. Before. I find that shocking, knowing who your wife is. <laughs> All right, maybe I've seen it once, but that's besides <laughs> the point. And I stand by saying Stellan Skarsgård because he's in the MCU. That was a great he's answer. He's been in two Mamma Mia movies, so yeah. all right, I was fine. thinking the exact same thing. You know? But absolutely not a performance to shake your heads about. And like I said, I'm very impressed with how you guys handle this, especially you considering it's a much broader, with inner geekdom, I feel like you can study, even as specific as we're getting now, you can study and you can really hone that craft. But when it's no holds barred, yeah. every everything counts in trivia, 
That's uh, that's saying something. Can I can yeah. I uh, just toot my own horn here for a second? Go yeah. for it. We've I already talked about other played, things. I haven't played uh, in a schmodown for like a year and a half. Mm. And so I've been a little rusty, but now my blood's up and I can't wait to get back in there and kick some ass. I'm really, yeah, it's back, it's back. And justice for biopics. I never want to hear that Roka crap again. That's what, you know. Honestly, that's the major victory of today. You took back biopics and nobody can throw it in your face anymore. Uh, and, and yeah, basically spinning DC for them was them spinning Spinner's Choice. So uh, I'm, excited to see what you guys are able to do in the future. Congratulations to Winston. He did a great job managing this match. Uh, and next time, it won't go his way. <laughs> Back to you guys. Uh, taking it on the chin there, but yeah. still optimistic for the future, as, as they should be. As they should be. As long as Jared does know the difference between the movie The Room and Room, <laughs> um, which is unclear. But what is clear... We're not asking the room questions on the movie <laughs> but, trivia show. But what is clear is that... Jared Haybun has a nice, broad movie trivia knowledge. He's not just a one-trick pony. He's not just an inner geekdom player. And, and, and Jim Vivita, like you said, he's been out of the game for about a year and a half. I think now that he's gotten a taste of it, they're going to come back really strong this team. I mean, you pull a category like musicals for your third point question, but if you don't know it, and you don't know musicals, that feels like a five-pointer. So I think in their heads, it felt like two five-pointers coming at them, and that's a tough thing to deal with. Rogue Two uh, did not have to answer a question in round number three. That's why they get the technical knockout, and I think a well-played match here, Emma. Rogue Two, somebody to be looking out for going forward in the team league. Definitely, yeah. Really good performances from both teams today. Again, Rogue Two, uh, I think, is going to make big waves in this league. That's something they've already proven. But I think the Wicked still have a lot left to prove and that they're going to do it. I think they're going to do it as well. Great performances by the teams, by our amazing crew, and by the incredible Miss Emma Fife here today. Thank you so much. I merely had words warble out in, in a somewhat <laughs> conscious stream. That is Emma Fife. I am Mark Ellis. On behalf of everybody here at the Movie Trivia Schmodown, we implore you to go check out the SchmodownLive.com for all upcoming tickets and news on the live events. Plus, there's a lot of great stats there. You can see who's leading the singles, the teams, intergeekdom, all that good stuff. It's right there at the SchmodownLive.com. For Christian Harloff and our entire family here, I'm Mark Ellis saying we'll see you soon on the Movie Trivia Schmodown. <laughs>